Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Life Coach Linda Armstrong here. Today is Friday, October the 5th, 2018, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, your second daily dose of happy for the day. We hope you've had a really happy week and a productive one and satisfying and abundant and all those good things and getting ready for a great weekend. And uh, I know that it's going to be a different weekend for me, Linda, because, of course, last week uh, we couldn't uh, do a show because Louise and I were in North Carolina for our niece's wedding. This week we're hoping it's going to be a little bit calmer than that, but it was good. Don't get me wrong. It's just it's nice not to be traveling this weekend. <laughs> yeah. So how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing okay. I've been busy myself. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's all good. Yeah. Well, being busy is good. Um of course, that kind of ties into the topic we're going to be looking at today. Because when, when, is, when is it good to be busy and, and when is it good to take action because you're inspired to, to take action? What does that mean? What does it mean to take inspired action? That's going to be what we're going to be talking about. Before we get into it, though, I'm going to uh, get our promos out of the way because I'm trying to do them first and, and it's kind of establish a new pattern there. Um, so they're the usual ones. The first one is if you're not yet a subscriber, please take a moment to become one. It's really easy to do. Chances are if you're on a phone right now, listening to us it, uh, you're probably already seeing a subscribe button and uh, we're just inviting you to click it but in case you don't see the button or you're not tech savvy or whatever we've got all the instructions on the home page of our website where you can look up how to subscribe to the podcast so please do that and second of all Oh, the homepage is allawaytoday.net. Did I say that? I can't remember if I said that or not. <laughs> but uh, the second promo and the second message we want to put out is we have been making major progress with getting more and more people exposed to LOA Today, getting more people aware of the fact they can get their daily dose of happy, which uh, really everybody needs. Everybody needs to feel better every day, right? I mean, we deal with challenges all day long, and and uh, we, we have lots of different opportunities to practice our deliberate creation, but... We also know we have to stay in the happy place to do it, and sometimes it can be a little challenging. Well, that's one of the reasons why we created LOA Today and Your Daily Dose of Happy, so that you can get that. Well, we want more people to have that, and in order to do that, we want everybody to be uh, posting whenever you're listening. Hey, I'm listening to LOAToday.net because it has made a huge difference in terms of us reaching out to uh, and finding people who hadn't heard of us before. And uh, you know, so now we're in, well into the hundreds of people who have heard about us. We need to move next into the thousands and then the tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people who have heard of us and who know about getting their daily dose of happy. So please do keep posting. Please do keep uh, sharing out there that you're listening because it's paying off. Linda, I mean, over the last three months, we have more than doubled our listenership. I mean, wow. number of people listening to episodes uh, three months ago was about 80 to 90. Now it's around, it's closing in on 250. I mean, it's just really wow. just flying. Great. Yeah, really good. Really, really good. So we want to keep that going. Yeah. So getting to the topic, uh, inspired action. That That's, well, first of all, we should probably define the term. Um, people who are regulars, shall we say, in the law of attraction field probably know what it means, but... We can't really assume that. We, we, we should kind of define the term. So you, you want to take a crack at it? What, how would you define inspired action? For me, inspired action is um, when you have this very high energy backing it up. And I'll add to that, inspired action for me is when it comes from like the divine energy, the universe that just drops this thought or this thing that you could do this idea this new inspiration um it kind of drops in and it kind and it lights you up so you're you're coming at doing this action through this very high vibration that's to me inspired action okay we we all know how to take action and a lot of times that action has a very you know pretty heavy energy around it and when your action is coupled with that type of energy, first of all, it takes way longer. <laughs> and you may actually not be taking the, the correct action. And then you won't find that out until later on after putting all this effort into it. Um, so I don't know, does that kind of let you know? What, and how would you define heavy energy? What is What makes energy heavy? When it's kind of like, <laughs> okay, the first thing that popped in my head is when you were like back in school and you had these, all these exams to take and you feel so bogged down and then you take, and then once the exam's over, you feel light again. So it's that, that feel that's heavy and light. It's like. So heavy and light would be the equivalent of, of feeling bad or feeling good. Feeling bad, feeling good, feeling o- overwhelmed, feeling mm-hmm. um, 
just this pressure, like you know, it, it's heavy. It's like this energy that kind of squashes your light. It, you know, it kind of makes, it's like condensed. It's like if you took your whole aura, your energy field, and you kind of squished it all in, <laughs> it's like dense and heavy. But then when, you know, that's relieved, you're out and you're big and bright and, and light again. Well, we certainly have in our uh, popular vocabulary, we have terms to describe this. Like uh, if you're dragging, that that's heavy energy, isn't it? I mean, if, yeah. you, if you're just kind oh, yeah. of dragging through your day. Yep. Yeah, dragging, right? Like that ball and chain, you had to drag it with you. It's heavy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Whereas if if you're flying, if you're feeling great, flying and feeling great, that's that's the opposite. That's the light energy. Light light as a bird, right? Just flying, just just going with the wind, you know, just following that flow. So really, inspired action then is action that we take when we're feeling good. Yeah. Well, because it has a very positive. Um, enthusiastic, energized feeling to it. Like you can't wait to do it. You know, you're, you're like really jazzed up. And and because you're in that energy, all these other ideas and things you can add to it come in that don't make you feel overwhelmed. But when you're not taking the inspired action and then your mental, your mind chatter gets in the way and starts telling you all these things you should do, then you get into overwhelm. Because you have an abundance, you know, it's law of attraction, right? You have this now abundance of heavier energy um, that's making you feel like like it's hard to get this thing done that you're trying to do or it's taking forever or it's never going to work. You know, all that, all that mental crap just comes in. Oh, yeah. So, and and we all know that one. I mean, that's where you're literally dragging through the day. You, you can't get anything done. Anything you try to do it happens slowly. You make mistakes. Right. Things don't come out right. It's yeah, because you're way, you're way past the point where you should have realized <laughs> yeah. this, this isn't really supporting me. Maybe there's a better way to do this, you know? And, and really, that's why, um, well, there's one reason why we have a daily dose of happy. It's why those of us who are learning to be deliberate creators in our own lives want to get into that good feeling place because we know that's a prerequisite that that is a, a something that has to be in place before you can truly begin to attract what you want into your life instead of inadvertently attracting what you don't want or more of what you don't want um, right so- and you know what i wanted to say before walt when you were talking about this daily dose of happy um that you know some people do not meditate right because they think they don't have the time or they don't know how Um, So they don't really get into that quiet place where they can hear their inner guidance. But if you don't know how to do that, you could listen to these podcasts because they take you there because you're letting go of the outside. You're listening to this up, upbeat, uplifting conversation. It gives you the same effect. It's an interesting point. I, I, as one who does the podcast, I've never had the opportunity to listen to two other people doing the show and see how does it lift me up? to uh, the point where I can actually get messages from inside, but it makes you know sense. What? It certainly well, makes it, sense. Med- meditation doesn't mean you have to get messages from inside. It's just being in that peaceful, being at peace is what it basically is all about. So when you're doing these shows, you're in that zone. Oh yeah. Well, that, I know that. That's I feel why it. you keep doing it. So these are like a meditation for you, even it, though oh, you're definitely. talking. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 I, I was just trying to imagine what it's like from the listener's perspective is all I was saying. I would say it's the same thing because if they enjoy listening to it, then they're going to be riding the wave of the energy that you and I and any other co-host is putting forth. That's true. Yep. That's very true. And it becomes, oh, uh, what's the the word that Cindy uses? It, it becomes entrained, energy entrains. That's what she says. That's and, right. And when it entrains, it basically connects. So, oh, yeah. so our energy connects to your energy and so on and so forth. And that, that, that's a nice thing because that means there's a multiplier effect. Um, right. that, that multiplier effect actually can get us through some tough times. I mean, there are times when we have trouble getting into that good feeling place, right? And that's what a lot of yeah. the, that's what all the processes are about, trying to, to change the momentum around and, and start feeling good so that we can attract the good, good things that we want in life. But that can be a challenge sometimes. Um, in fact, that's, that's what the topic of most of the shows is when you really boil it down. Well, so entrainment, uh, you know, like uh, is what popped into my mind, and maybe this is how she uses it in, in what in her practice. But say, um, when I used to just strictly do Reiki, I would always use crystals, and I would put, you know, the sh- chakra crystals on the chakras, 
that match the vibration of that chakra, right? So when that chakra is out of balance and you place this crystal on it, your body starts to entrain with the vibration of the crystal. So now the crystal has one vibration. It's not all confused like our bodies. Our bodies have like all this stuff going on. And so that's why we can get out of balance. And by just simply placing even just the crystal on the chakra and just being in that peaceful place, you're allowing your that chakra to entrain itself back to the, its vibration, which this crystal is already holding. So any, anyway, that just popped in. So I figured I might as well share it. Yeah, that's good. In fact, uh, what you talked about there, when, when you talked about, I, I think you actually used the word healing there. Maybe I, I, maybe I put that in with my own head. I don't know. But uh, mm-hmm. it made me think about something. Uh, last couple of days, I've had uh, literally a pain in the neck. <laughs> I've, okay. had, I've had reasons to have a pain in the neck. But literally, I've had a pain in the neck. And I've been trying to like work it loose and use heat and, and just mm-hmm. relax and doing some meditating and just napping, sleeping, whatever, you know, and gaining some, some improvement. And sometimes I slide back and so forth. But it makes me wonder, you know, in the, in the, the uh, context of our discussion about inspired action, I wonder what, well, first of all, I wonder uh, what I can do to shift my, my energy so that I feel better about that. But second, I wonder if if I have been getting that pain because I've been taking uninspired actions. Yep. Well, yep. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> that sounds like a yes to me. <laughs> your body is going, your, you know, your body is a vehicle that this, your soul, your energy travels around with, right? It's like your car and your car needs a tune up every now and then. Otherwise it starts to have problems. So if you're not paying attention, like the pain's coming in to say, Walt, pay attention. Mm-hmm. Okay. This pain is trying to get your attention. So like one it's thing. It's succeeding you, by the way. I want to mention that. <laughs> yeah. Now the thing is it could succeed and get, you could put the wrong energy to it. Like hating it, you know, like really adding the same energy that built it in the first place mm. to it, which is just going to intensify it. Right. Always the solution is love, right? That's always the solution. Love. Yeah. I mean, that's how I, you know, that's how I healed my rotator cuff. But what you can do is maybe after the show later on, you can just kind of sit or maybe after the show, cause you're already kind of in this zone and just kind of ask the pain. Okay. What are you trying to show me? What is it that I'm not hearing? Because, you know, maybe your guys are trying to get through to you and you're just so busy with all this other stuff and possibly not using the inspired action, but more of that forced got to get it done kind of energy. And um, so the pain's trying to get your attention. So you want to ask the pain, like as if you can sit quietly and just talk to the pain in your neck and say, okay, so what are you trying to tell me, you know? what is it that I need to do so that you can leave? You know, first of all, you give it love. You thank it for the message it's bringing to you. Even if you don't hear or get the message just by being mindful and paying attention to it, like putting your attention on the pain. Is that normally when you have pain, it's like your whole body wants to pull away from that part that has pain. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. But, you, but that, that's not going to help it. You want to go into it. So you can go into it by, you know, assuming, imagining that you're having a conversation with the pain and you'll be surprised what you may actually hear. It's it's interesting because this morning, Tom and I were talking about um, the challenges of dealing with uh, that. There's that, that place that most of us who are practitioners find deep inside where we still have doubts. We still have, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're on board in every other way, but there's that little inside place that just won't give in. Right. They won't just let go. And we were wondering, well, so what's the best way to deal with that? Some Tom was arguing, well, it's about dealing with uh, dealing with it as an emotional issue that perhaps derived from childhood. And then there's the Abraham approach that says, well, you don't worry about that too much. You just focus on feeling good and so forth. And there are a number of different approaches. Um, the thing that I've noticed is that all of them are good, but none of them are perfect. And I think there's a lot to be said for the idea that we're all individuals. We all have different understandings, different levels of understanding, different uh, lives, different goals, different aspirations, different things we want, different things we don't want. And so it's not like there's going to be a one size fits all. And and yet we do know with all these different modalities, they are all very effective. It's just finding which one's going to work in any given situation. Now, I know for myself, when I've done the kind of thing you're talking about, um, sometimes I've, I've gotten some kind of an answer or an inspiration or whatever, but a lot of times I get nothing. 
and, and you mm-hmm. started to address that, but maybe you could address that a little bit more. What happens? What do you do when you just you just can't get anything? You you sit with it. You're asking, you're poking and prodding, and you're just not getting any answers. Part of why you're not getting anything is because once again, you noticed I'm not getting anything. <laughs> right? Yeah, <you're> right. <laughs> So here comes that focus of, oh, I'm not hearing nothing. This is ridiculous. This is stupid. People, I don't <laughs> that whole, all that mind chatter comes in, right? Um, so, you know, you can do just to quiet that is say, you know what? All right. I, I'm going to just trust that my message will come to me either now or as I'm walking through my day. You might find in the shower the next day, all of a sudden, the perfect thing drops in because you're not at that moment searching for it. Yeah, that's true. That does happen. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, when you do it often enough, you can kind of be in that place where, okay, where you, where you don't expect that you have to have the answer right now, you're just trusting it'll come. And then the more you do that, the more it actually comes when you sit and ask. So because you, part of it is being persistent that, then. So, so it's, yeah. part of it is just persistently, you know, asking and waiting and just in a sense, being patient for the answer. Or just asking and letting it go. Like with your neck, I would just like kind of sit with it. I would imagine, um, okay, imagine how much you love your wife. If you could ball up that energy of love into this little ball in your hand, right? (laughs) And you just put it right there into the pain. So, you know, I'm just going to give you the same love that I have for my wife. I'm going to put it right there into the pain. Um, I I don't know if I can hear what you want to tell me, but I'm just going to love you. And I'm going to allow it to drop in. Maybe it'll come in in the shower tomorrow. Maybe it'll come in while I'm driving to work. You know, when you're kind of in that, no mind kind of a place because you're just doing a, 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 a something a routine that you always do. You ever find that that's when they drop in a lot of times? <laughs> yeah. So the the, so, unex, the unexpected delivery is what we're talking about here. Yeah. So I, I took some notes while you were talking before, and and something when you were talking about your discussion you had the other day or this morning, I forget what you said. Mm-hmm. Um, so what came into mind was like doubt, right? When you're doubting. Mm-hmm. Uh, yourself or what you're doing. So I forget how you phrased that because we kind of went off track. But what I wrote down is like, you know, why? Why are you not trusting? Why are you doubting? And whose point of view are you trying to match? So the doubt comes in because you have some kind of outside perception of how it ought to come in, how it's come in for other people, how other people are able to hear their messages. You know, you start comparing to what's out there and so you disconnected from, well, what's my way? And can I trust myself to have my own way that it doesn't have to be the way all these maybe gurus might say it is, or my friend who's always finding their answer like this, you know what I mean? So it's, it comes back to, I hope I'm making sense. It comes back to trusting. Like I did a video on this the other day, like who's to say, like, you know, and I was talking about perfection Who's to say that your imperfections are not just perfect? Oh, sure. Right? Because when you're trying to do it the way you think it's supposed to be done or the way other people have had success, you know, maybe it's just not your way. Yeah, exactly. That, that, that to me, summarizes very nicely. It kind of encapsulates the idea that while there are many ways to go about realigning yourself, each of us needs to find the one or the ones that work for us. And right. and go there because right. not every method is going to work well for everybody. Does just because it works for fifty other people doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Yeah, and when you can soften that and allow your way to come through without having to try and make it be anything, then it comes through easily. So again, it's just softening the energy around it, almost like softening the importance around it, or or taking it off of a timeline. You know which is where patience comes in and you're just allowing things to unfold. Because when we can like kind of surrender and allow, everything comes through. It reminds me too that one of the comments that Abraham makes is that they don't advocate patience, but their context is a little different. The patience they're talking about is being patient with waiting for something to show up. Whereas what we're talking about here isn't so much waiting for a, a thing to manifest, it's waiting for a signal to come through, which I guess is kind of similar. I mean, virtually everything that we're tracking is, you know, included yeah. in this. So in, in one sense, it's the same, but in another sense, it's, it's like, it's, it's learning the communication. It's, it's learning the, uh, the connection and giving yourself the time to learn that connection. That, right. that, that, that makes it a little bit different qualitatively from 
No, well, well the, the new car hasn't shown up yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, because when you put a timeline to it, then you start to limit yourself to only one or two particular ways something can happen, right? So you're cutting yourself off from that divine inspiration so you can take the inspired action. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. it gets, it gets, I mean, it's tricky because it, it sounds so simple, but it's not. <laughs> Doesn't it? <laughs> well, the simplest and, things are usually the most difficult to implement anyway. That's what I've learned yeah. over time. <laughs> but, you know, you'll, you'll hit it, right? Like, so, like, I've been pretty good. I, I tell you, in this past week, I've been pretty good with, with um, just surrendering and letting things unfold. Oh, nice. And, and things are unfolding. So it's like, wow, okay, I'm here now. But, you know, I, I'll probably, I don't want to put it, I don't want to, put it out there but i'll just say it i may not be there next week <laughs> I, might, I might be back to starting to push things to try to happen again you know <laughs> you, you definitely have to watch saying that kind of thing i mean literally right. we had an experience of that during the podcast on i can't remember which day it was tuesday or thursday but it was with uh, one of the shows with wendy um and i was telling the story about how we have new neighbors upstairs we live in an apartment complex new neighbors upstairs mm -hmm. and the new neighbor upstairs was playing some very loud music in the room directly above the room where I do the podcast from. And yeah. and not only that, they had their window open, so it was coming from two different areas. So it was pretty pretty loud here in, in, in my office. And I was thinking to myself, well, that's not going to work for a podcast, and it's certainly not going to work for me doing the rest of my work. I need to get that quiet. And so I put it out to the universe. I need to get it quiet. And, you know, 15 minutes later, they turned off the radio and stayed off. Right. Until during the podcast, when I told the story about how the music had been playing and how I was getting upset about it and how I need to find a way to turn it off, and the music came back on. <laughs> and then I recognized, oh, I just brought the music back on. I got to talk about turning the music off. So I talked about turning the music off, and the music turned off. <laughs> this happened like two or three times. It was really, really funny. <laughs> perfect, perfect. But, and you know what? And that spirit playing with you. Yeah, no so kidding. The, <laughs> yeah, so you can make a point, and you can, you can, you know, put into the uh, let's call it what we so called think is real life situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can you know, experience it as you listen to this call. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It, it was pretty wild. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's one of those things where it's like a V eight moment, right? Oh, geez, I just did it again. <laughs> Uh, but it was fun. It was fun. So, okay. So inspired action then. How do we tie that into what we're talking about here? Because uh, th certainly the um, the idea of examining and, you know, asking and loving and so forth, the pain point, like we'll, we'll take the example of the pain in the neck, which by the way is, is receding. But um, that pain in the neck, how, how do we tie that into inspired action? What's the inspired action to take when you've got a pain in the neck? The inspired to action to take to, to release the pain? I guess so, yeah. Well, for me, it's individual. So I'm not exactly sure what you mean, but I would say, you know, for me, I, when I have something like that turn on, I, 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 I sit with it. I do exactly what I just told oh, you so, to do. <laughs> so, so just the sitting with it thing, okay. Yeah, I'll just meditate on it or, or I'll just thank you, thank it or, or I'll, you know, cause it ties into some of the work I do where I'll just like look at it and welcome it and thank you for what you're trying to do for me. Um, so you totally, you just accepting it mm -hmm. and it, it, it just needs to be seen. Right. And then it starts to dissipate. It's mindfulness. You know, when you, when you can actually look at something, it, it can release its hold. So is that, in your experience, a process that we can use with anything that we're we're finding to be resistant? In other words, yeah. If we discover something resistant in our lives, you use that same approach with all of it, right? Yeah, you could. You I mean, could. Like what I'm talking about right now is really more to do with things that turn on within the body, but emotion is a, is a turn, something that turns on. So now all of a sudden you're in this anger, maybe, with something that just happened. And you can sit with that, too, and you're like, okay. I'm just, I see you. I'm really angry. This person did whatever, whatever. And then just, you know, welcome it and say, okay, what am I, what is it I'm not seeing? Like, what, is, what do I need to learn here? Because a lot of times it's just because both, say it was a relationship problem to people having an argument or whether it's business or romantic or whatever. Um, if you can stop and say, well, what am I not seeing? Because everything's a mirror, right? And you can kind of look at the situation through from a different point of view, like almost like you can go outside of yourself and look at it. 
then you might actually see that it's really not that big of a deal. It's two people not even hearing a word each other is saying, right? Because that's usually what happens. And mm-hmm. then this anger comes out of it. So I don't know. Of course, when, like, you, when you're in the middle of the anger, it's often hard to think about, well, I'm going to go outside myself and take on a new perspective. That that one angry perspective is pretty strong. Otherwise, you wouldn't be so angry. Right. But it's just, again, it, so so the more you awaken to to the fullness of you and that the truth that is that your energy, then you can sometimes, but like, so, so I can do that now pretty easily. I don't know how it all happened. (laughs) 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 Uh, I guess just little by little, um, you know, catching myself in a situation, even right in the middle of it. And you can be like, okay, hold on. This is totally not what I I don't want to be arguing with this person. I love this person. Um, And you can just stop. And, And you know what you do? You just stop and you start listening. That is so true, start, actually, because I've been start, thinking about... Yeah, if you situ- start listening, then you can actually hear what they're saying. And then guess what? They may start listening, too. And then, and then it can just start to resolve itself. I, you know, I, some situations, it's not that easy. But you can then do it, the internal work outside of the conversation, like later on. I say, all right, what am I missing here? You know, there's got to be a reason for this because it's happening in my experience. And if it's happening out there, something about that is within me, too. So what is it? And you know, it's just like an internal check checkup for yourself. Well, yeah. I mean, Abraham teaches that uh, when we're feeling that kind of a negative emotion, particularly a strong one, it means essentially we're in disagreement with what our inner being is thinking and saying and feeling and experiencing and believing. And right. that there's actually an internal disagreement going on within us. Um, and I have actually been taking more and more um, opportunities, maybe that's the right word, to... Uh-huh. Uh, when I'm in the midst of an angry or or frustrated or you know just tired of a situation, to just stop and say, okay, all right, I know I'm just feeling angry or whatever, frustrated, and just take a breath. You know, never mind what's going on. Just walk away from a minute, shake it off, take a breath, slow down, and and basically try to get myself into a slightly more meditative stance. Now I don't always get there, right? I I still can feel the the, the anger or the rage or the frustration or whatever it is. But if I if I can at least stop myself, I can at least slow it down. And if I slow it down, that usually gives me a, an alternative path to you know continuing the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then maybe you just look at okay, what, what, what if I what if I were in their shoes and I was saying all the stuff they were saying? Let me see if I can see their angle on it or their point of view. And then you might actually really see their point of view. And you might even find that it's not that much different than your own. It's just that, you, you know, you just, the communication just got lost somewhere and mm-hmm. both people are not really listening again to each other. Yeah. Usually if, if there's that level of, of negative emotion involved, it's because one or both of us have, have dug our heels in in some way. And we just right. basically <laughs> said, okay, we're, we're going to stay in this, this pose for a while, <laughs> which doesn't serve either one of us, but yeah. And it's all just subconscious programming based on past past experience it's nothing to do with the right here and the right now and it's just coming forward because something triggered it up to the surface which is great because then you can heal it (laughs) you know um if you had the awareness to say okay this is bringing something up within me well there are certainly i mean it's it's not like there are no triggers in the now the the triggers triggers the the triggers definitely are, are occurring in the now but what you're suggesting is that the original root it, is not they're necessarily triggering a past program. Yeah. It's triggering a past program. So when we're triggering, Otherwise, it wouldn't be a problem. When we're triggering a past program, we may or may not know what that program is. Do we need to know what it is? Do we need to ferret it out that way? Um, I, 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 I don't think you need to know all the details of it. You can acknowledge that what you know, you can ask yourself, okay, so what what when's the last time something similar to this? It doesn't have to make logical sense, but when have I felt this way before? And then see what pops in. It's like, I mean, a good thing you can do is just journal. I think I've talked about that before. And you just write down everything that comes to your mind based on this argument I just had or this situation. And you just let it flow. So you want to get into that, you know, that kind of like an it's like a meditation. You just pull yourself away. You're like, okay, this is, I don't want to walk around with this anger anymore. So you start writing, you know, when have I felt this before? And then you're like, oh, I was in high school and such and such said this. And I'm like, okay. And you, okay, anything earlier? You can always go for earlier, similar, earlier, similar, but it doesn't have to be. It could just be anything that pops in. And just by writing them down, again, you're looking at them 
it starts to dissolve the energy. That's true. I mean, just the act of writing something out like that, it, it's almost like you're you're giving the negative energy a place to flow to away from you. It, you know, it just wants to be seen. <laughs> it just wants to be seen. The only reason two people are arguing is because they just want to be heard and the, they're not hearing each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. often the case, isn't it? it yeah. It's like there's a little little child inside of us that says, just acknowledge that you hear what I'm saying, that there's some value to it. That's, that's often what it amounts to. Oh, my God. I remember fighting with my mom. And we were both doing the same thing. You're not hearing what I'm saying. Yeah. I just <laughs> and then you know the other side is no, you're not hearing what I'm saying. And right. like no one was hearing each other. I mean, I I remember it so clearly. Now I can look back. I'm like, oh my god, I was such in that trap with my mom. I never ever ever put myself in her shoes to see. And I was a stubborn kid, you know. Like <laughs> I, now I look back. I'm like, oh my god, she had a lot of patience with me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Yeah, I, I have had fun um, in in circumstances where I have that direct connection, like you just described, where I know there's like me and somebody else, and we're just going at it, and we're both agreeing that you know neither one of us hearing is hearing the other person. And when you when I notice that, my best defense against that is just to burst out laughing because it's it's so ridiculously humorous. You know that well, you have. You know what? It's, it's almost like looking at a cartoon of ourselves. You know, where where the cartoon is two people who are just shouting at each other, and neither one's paying any attention to the other. Right. That's great because that that right there breaks the breaks the energy flow. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. Laughter is one of the most powerful re- weapons we have. To yeah. not even weapon. Weapon is the wrong word. It's one of the power most powerful tools we have to yep. to shift our energy when we're in a place where it's not as it's not as good as we want to be, or maybe it's even really bad energy, but laughter does all kinds of things. Laughter is great for everything from depression on up to hopefulness and everything in between. And it just, and, and it's wonderful even at the highest levels because it just kind of reinforces those levels and keeps those momentums going. And you know, it's as contagious as um, a yawn. I mean, you ever have yeah. someone, something hits them so funny and they're cracking up so much that you're cracking up. You have no clue why you're laughing. Mm, yeah. You just go in the flow of that, that laughter where it's like hurting your cheeks, you know, um, that's awesome. It's like when you walk into a, a, a comedy club or something where somebody is, is just doing a string of jokes, that kind of thing. And you walk in and you, you hear the joke and the joke doesn't sound funny to you, but everybody else has already got the laugh going. And so the whole yeah. room is laughing. And even though you don't think the joke is jokes are funny after a while, they the won't. laughter catches up with you and you start to feel the laughter and then it starts to seem funny to you. You can't help it. It's contagious, just mm-hmm. like love. And that's why I really, really always talk about sending love. You just send it out. It's contagious. You just got to send it out. People don't have to know you're doing it. You're just sending that energy out. Now, love is another one of those words that probably needs a little definition. We, we all t- kind of take it for granted. But what I've been realizing is that love is just a, another word for a really high level of you know very positive, good-feeling energy, really. And when you're in that good-feeling place... I mean, loving somebody is actually pretty easy at that point. It's not. Oh, yeah. It's not like you have to, you know, wave a magic wand or something. The the love just kind of flows. The the love is is energy flowing, and it's flowing because yep. you're feeling good. Yep. So you don't have to 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 fight for it. It's just kind of there. <laughs> yeah, and you can always find it by looking at stuff like things out in nature even things you see like on on uh, you know social media like somebody posts some video of some animal who achieved something or somebody saved this and anim- this horse from being stuck in the mud or you know and you watch that and you just you're filled with that love and that appreciation for this person who helped that animal and you, and then then you'll see the animal's appreciation for the person who helped them i mean that makes you just like bubble over with this energy of love so you can always find it if you don't know what it look look for things that uh, anybody's achievement really. I mean, I can watch a commercial and start crying because I just from a commercial <laughs> because you can feel the the love that that they're getting across between the two people that are selling whatever the product is, <laughs> <laughs> and it's all just acting, but it 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 brings up the emotion. Well, that's true. I mean, that's the nature of a of a good film, or I guess it depends on what one considers to be a good film. Because I, I qualify it that way when I look at what is in the realm of popular films, and most of them are topics that just I, I have no interest in. They make me want to throw up. 
you know, but people mm-hmm. like them. There, there's a lot of violence. There's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, high action drama. There's a lot of um, uh, negative emotion going on. A lot of negative emotion of various kinds. And most of the time, I want something that feels good. You know, hey, well, I, mean, I do a podcast on the Daily Dose of Happy, so that gives you an idea of what my bias, bias is. And yet, people like to have all those negative emotions played up. Mm-hmm. Why do you think that is? I mean, uh, since love is actually where we're in our highest, most positive state, and that's the where the energy flows freest, why do you think that we're so drawn, so attracted to entertainment that brings us down into the lowest level of energies, the energies that don't flow nicely. Most of the time, I think those things that you're watching um, in some way will inspire you back to the, you know, like I'll, I'll think, of, I was, as you were saying that, I was thinking of, did you watch the, the series Dexter, the serial killer? I, I don't now, even know it. <laughs> okay, so Dexter was a serial killer. And let me tell you, you would be like praying that he gets home safe from his kill. Okay? Really? <laughs> Okay. Yeah. This guy's a serial killer. You know, his his, fa- his father was a cop, and uh, he noticed this tendency of Dexter to have to kill things, and so he kind of coached him or trained him to only use that energy he, like a vigilante. So, like Dexter would kill like evil people. <laughs> okay. All right. This is a weird conversation, but the the no point kidding. of it is, if anybody who's seen the show knows. You really were like wanting him to get back safe for him not to get caught. You know, you loved him. This is a serial killer. Well, we loved him. Well, maybe you did. I didn't watch the show. <laughs> watch the show. I bet you love him too. Um, actually, that's not the kind of show I really like watching. I mean, I for okay. me, I mean, now I'm speaking just for myself here. But mm-hmm. if I see a theme of any kind going on that's just dragging the negative emotions, I just don't even want to watch it. I lose interest so quickly. Uh, yeah, give, but, give you an example. Back the, back in the like the early 1980s, late 1970s, there was a film that became very famous called Alien, starring Sigourney Weaver. And yeah. that film got a lot of uh, press at the time, and it was like the horror film and so forth. And there was a friend of mine in college who said, let's go to see the film together. And I said, oh, I don't really like that kind of thing. He says, no, no, come, come on, it's going to be good. I said, oh, all right. So I went with him. And I don't know if you remember the movie at all, but there's at one point in the movie where this alien creature eats his way out from inside of a guy's belly. And it's yeah. pretty gross, and, and, and it's it's like the ultimate horror point in the movie. And when they got to that part of the movie, I, I wasn't really enjoying the movie anyway, but when they got to that part of the movie, I was not emotionally invested in it. I, I, had, I, had, I had not uh, gotten into that place of uh, suspending my disbelief. So I was just watching it from a technical viewpoint, and the the, the technical presentation, you know, the 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 what do, what do they call it, the special effect of the uh, alien eating its way out, looks so fake to me that I just burst out laughing. <laughs> I, I couldn't take it seriously, and I'm covering my mouth, and people are screaming around the theater, and I'm going. <laughs> You know, and it was it was a surreal experience because here are all these people who are clearly enjoying the film. I mean, they just they got to this one point, and oh, now they're letting all their their screams out and so forth. And I'm just sitting there, and I'm shaking my head, and I've, I've got my hand over my mouth, trying to to stifle the laugh. And my friend who dragged me there grabs me by the shoulder. He's holding his hand over his mouth, but not for the same reasons because he wants to throw up. And he says, "I'm leaving." <laughs> uh, yeah. So, I mean, that gives you an idea. My my sensibility about, uh, you know, horror films and so forth, I, I just, they just don't really, yeah, but they, that's they don't like, connect for me. The example of Dexter is nothing like a horror film. When I was younger, I used to love horror films. I can't, I can't watch them anymore. Like, once I've awakened and got more sensitive in the way I'm now, I cannot watch those things. But if there's something uplifting about it, like, I don't know if you're into The Walking Dead, I tried not to be into that, but my husband was watching it. I got sucked in. But that that show is all about compassion, people working together. And, you know, there's the zombies are like second. Na- they're, not, they're not even important, really, to the to the to the show. So you'll be surprised how some of those shows you would never think that that you could ever get anything good from actually do bring out this energy of of loving the characters and of um you know, wanting them to do well and help each other. And, you know, I, you know. <laughs> I think what you're really doing is you're proving to each his own. I mean, clearly they, yeah. they really resonate with you, which is great, yeah. you know. 
Well, the funny thing is I know quite a few people who do the kind of work I do. And we're like, you're into that too. I'm like, yeah, I love it. You know, I'm crying for this guy to get home safe. And yeah, whatever. <laughs> anyway. Well, it's nice to know you have a sick side to you too. <laughs> no, I'm kidding you. I'm teasing you. Yeah. I, I think what you're really describing is the fact that we all have our different perspectives about life and what is of value to us and what's of important to us. And we look for those things. And when we see those things, they resonate. They make sense to us. They feel good to us. They feel perhaps hopeful to us, whatever. But the point is, we connect to them on an emotional basis. And when we do that, especially when it's something that is entertainment related, then now all of a sudden we're we're enjoying a particular kind of entertainment that somebody else might not enjoy, but we're enjoying yeah, it. But I think the conversation came about because you were we were talking about looking for the love for getting into that. Well, yeah. Um, vibration exactly. and so the, the the what i'm illustrating is that you'd be surprised how you can find that energy in just about anything really if you're willing to look for it it's interesting you say that because for me i've always looked for love within i don't really look for love outside do you know what i mean yeah like no, for, I mean, like, like for me it i i don't know I, well you know how i've had uh only in the most recent years, kind of developed in recent years, more like recent months, developed my ability and my trust and my uh, connection to whatever energy there is around me or in me or through me or mm -hmm. that I'm experiencing. And yeah. even in that, the energy for me, I mean, yes, it can seem like the energy comes from outside, but I just don't think of it like that way. I think about it as if we're coming yeah. from inside. So even like, like you did, you gave me a free session one time. And during that uh -huh. session, you gave, asked permission to come to you, and I could actually feel the energy coming into me. And yet, even in that, I didn't feel like it was coming from outside. I mean, I did in well, one sense, because I knew that you and I were, were doing the session. So in that sense, I thought of it coming from you. But the way it actually felt was that it was just inside. Well, it is inside. And that's why everything's a mirror, because everything in your experience is a projection from what's within you. Everything. Everything's a mirror. So the good stuff and the bad stuff. So, you know, the more you feel that energy of love within, the easier it is to find that energy of love in anything you look at out there because it's already within you. Okay. That makes some sense to me. I mean, if you were, the, if it, we talked about being in the matrix, right? One time. So if yeah. you're, if you're running this op, this program, it is programs in the mm -hmm. subconscious mind. It's like the computer and it's dictating how you're going to experience this and that and the other thing based on all these programs it contains. Mm -hmm. um, it's, re, it's, if you're that computer and it's running programs. So what's projected is coming from within, right? Everything that you see is a part of a program that you're playing out. <laughs> I mean, it can get really kind of deep in that, you know, nothing really exists. It's all just little particles of energy, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, that... it's, it's what we put to it that makes it be whatever it is that we're in agreement in the collective consciousness for it say to be like, we, we all agree that these are trees out here and that that's grass and that this is the earth. You know, those are, pretty widespread collectives right mm -hmm. oh yeah <laughs> but if you are the individual who's playing the movie project like you close your eyes there's nothing there you open your eyes and there's all the stuff that you have projecting out into your world mm -hmm. that's yep. why when anything, anything you consider to be bad comes up or a problem it's just something that is playing off of a program from within so that's why i like the work that i do because we can uncover the the ones that are not supporting you because all the good stuff, of course, supports you, right? Yeah, I guess it does, doesn't it? Ultimately. Yeah, I mean, your subconscious mind does serve a purpose, but it's when it's running off some old program that doesn't serve you, that's when you want to kind of, you know, delete that program and write a, rewrite a new one, write a new one. There are a lot of ways to, to do that, aren't there? Because, I mean, you have a very unusual, interesting one that you, that you take your approaches, you basically go in and rewrite it, which I had never heard anyone do that before, where, you, where one person is rewriting another person's program for them. That was, that was really interesting. Um, but there's also like, uh, you know, the, the more traditional hypnotherapy or, or, or psychotherapy or, um, you know, the, the, the teachings of Abraham and how they talk about just going for better feeling thoughts and so forth. There, there are a lot of different ways to go about um, that kind of thing. 
and each one of them has its pluses and minuses. You you found one that really works well for you, and it's very direct the way that that you do it. You're you're just directly interacting with energy in a way that few others do. Yeah, but so that's what works for me, and that what will and that's what will work for the people who come to me, or they wouldn't be drawn to me. But it's not the only way to do it. You know, the, mm-hmm. that's the, that's the beauty of it. There's no right way. Yeah, I guess it's really that that again ties into the conversation that Tom and I had this morning, and the realization that there are lots of great tools and we have to find which ones work best for us. And when it it comes to that doubt, that little seed of doubt that uh, just doesn't want to go away. I I think it's about just trying the tools and seeing which one has the most effect and maybe even chipping away at it a little bit at a time until finally you release and and it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. So Let's get back to uh, how inspired action ties into this. We're talking about energy, right? We're talking about um, how we interact with it, how we choose what you know processes and modalities we use to uh, um, to interact with it and to, um, to to basically mold it and, and change it and shift it and shape it in our lives. Again, inspired action. We defined that earlier as taking action when when we're when we're in a good feeling place. So. I guess the natural conclusion to draw is when we are flowing energy the best, that's when we take action. Is that about right? Well, because that's usually when it comes from inspiration. So you want to see the difference between the inspired thought and the one that is manufactured by this other energy that it's pushing you to have to make this change. Or Again, you got to feel it. It's either light, if it's coming from the light, it's inspired. If it's coming from denser energy, like that, just this our, our humanness and that reactive mind, then that's just a different story. So you just kind of kind of get in tune with what feels what feels right. Does so, it feel good? I mean, sometimes I'm inspired. I don't even sleep. I'm like, I keep going on this thing because I can't stop myself. <laughs> that's inspired action. Or many times I'm pushing myself to try and figure this thing out so I can promote it in this way, or maybe I need to create this, or maybe I should put, you know, but it's all this like, maybe, 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 because I don't have the inspiration saying, no, this is how you do it. Right? So when I get an inspiration, it's like, I don't want to stop myself because I'm so in the flow. It's different than when I don't want to stop myself because I have to try and get a result. Maybe one way of saying that then is a good time to consider an action to be inspired is is when you can hardly wait to do it. Yeah, when you're really, I mean, the word inspired, it, it's like very uplifting word. Mm-hmm. You know, um, inspiration is, is not a heavy energy. Inspiration is like a, there's love and excitement and joy and enthusiasm. It's all those high vibrations. It, it doesn't fit. It can't fit with doubt and fear and worry and you know all of that just they don't mesh the doubt fear and the worry is when you're pushing yourself no if i don't do this i'm not going to be able to pay my mortgage this month that's a whole different energy right right right. yeah Yeah, that's true now if if i take this back to the the pain in the neck situation right so when you when we're when we're sitting with that, when we're asking the questions, you know, what, what, what's your lesson for me? What message do you have? You know, what is it you're trying to tell me? Uh, I appreciate you giving me the message, all that kind of thing. We're not necessarily in the highest vibrational place because we're dealing with something that's uncomfortable. But we're also in perhaps a higher place than we were before, a better place than we were before. And... Well, you may, not, you may not be when you first start the conversation, mm-hmm. but after a little while you'll find that your energy has shifted. It'll shift in some way. So the question then is, well, we're, we're kind of taking an action there in that we're doing this questioning. How do we reconcile the idea of inspired action with that? Because like you just said, we're not necessarily starting from a good place. It could be actually a rather poor place. Is that inspired action to take the time to ask the questions? Well, you know what? I guess the difference is you can decide to be miserable. Or something within you might say, you know what, maybe I'll try this thing where you ask the pain a question. That might feel more like an inspired action, right? You're letting go of that. I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to be miserable. This is going to be the way my life is for the rest of my life. And (laughs) nobody gets me and blah, 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 right? In that case, you're you're not even thinking about, it may not, you may not even remember somebody saying, why don't you try talking to your pain? 
you know, <laughs> but <laughs> if that can pop in and all of a sudden you're like, Hey, you know, I got nothing to lose. That might feel a little more inspired. Again, you had to check in with yourself. Does it feel like you're pushing or does it feel like you're eager? You're inspired to try something different or to look at something a different way. In other words, is it harder or is it easier? Yeah. And you know what? Sometimes you might have to force yourself because you're like, I heard this girl talking about this thing and I got nothing to lose. So I'm just going to do it. You could even do it kind of resistant. Like, yeah, it's probably stupid and it's probably all crap, but you know, I'm going to try. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you realize, oh my God, I don't, you know, I, I'm actually not as caved in as I was like 20 minutes ago. So I guess there's something to this. And then you kind of lighten it and then you can work with it even more. You have, it's, you have to find your own way with it. It kind of reminds me of something Joel and I were talking about yesterday morning. Um, he recently got a certification in hypnotherapy from an organization in California called the Hypnotherapy, well, HMI, I can't remember what HMI stands for, uh, something, mm -hmm. something Institute, Hyp Hypnotherapy M, whatever the M is. But uh, mm -hmm. it was an institute that was founded by a guy named Dr. John Kappas, who uh was a professional hypnotherapist and did extensive research um, in his clinic, working with actual actual clients and developing a method over time for helping people deal with uh, you know those those old recordings, those old tapes that are stuck in our minds. And the method yeah. he came up with, he called the mental bank concept. Uh, in fact, Joel and I are talking about. Uh, perhaps doing a series of, of uh, discussions about it. But it was mm -hmm. one of those things like you were just talking about where you read what the mental bank activity is that he recommends. And I mean, I can just, I, I can give you like a brief idea of it. Basically you're making a record each day of all the things that you did and you're giving yourself brownie points. I'll call it that. I mean, it's, you do it in dollars, but you're giving yourself credit for doing all these things during the day that you may or may not have enjoyed doing. And, and yeah. you're, you're basically building up your, positive association with I did all these things that are good some of them were good directly for me some of them I just needed to do and I got them done and I congratulate myself but you're basically building yourself up for doing all this and wow. one of the comments the author makes in his book is you may uh, learn what this task is and sit down and do it a couple of days and say this is just so dumb this is just mm -hmm. so stupid and his recommendation was just do it anyway <laughs> just do it anyway. Screw it. You know? Okay. So it's dumb. Fine. Do it anyway. Do it for 30 days because it'll pay right. off for you. That's kind of what you were talking about, about the girl, yeah. you know? Yeah. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt to try. You might be surprised. Yeah. You might be surprised. And in fact, I was kind of surprised uh, because I started it for the first time last night after um, reading the book. Joel was kind enough to send me a copy of the book and I'd been reading through it the last day or two. And got to the point where I learned the exercises they have to do. And I started doing them last night. So my, last night was the first time to try it. And it says in the book that the first couple nights that you try it, you're supposed to do it right before you go to sleep. For, so it's like a five-minute activity before you go to sleep. And then you may find during the night that all of a sudden you're you're sleepless. All, you wake up and your mind is going nuts and it's doing all this stuff and so forth. Well, you know, I, I did my exercise. I went to bed. I slept for three or four hours. And all of a sudden, boom, I was awake and my mind was doing all this stuff. I couldn't go back to sleep. I was thinking, well, he was sure right about that one. <laughs> I mean, what do you do? Post, plan a post-hypnotic suggestion in my brain or something? <laughs> but yeah. it, it was exactly right. And his point was, if that happens, that means it's working. I said, okay, well, I guess I'm losing some sleep. But, hey, at least it's working. Now I just got to find out what's the work it's doing. I guess I'll find out by doing it, you know, for day two and day three and day four. Right. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> but that's the point. We're trying to try new things. Um, I mean, uh, I, I don't feel like I've I've totally mastered everything. So I'll just keep trying processes until I find the combination that works for me. And you know, it's not like I haven't made progress. I've made lots of progress. But I don't know. I guess I'm a kind of a perfectionist in terms of wanting to to get it, to really get it, you know, to the point where yeah. I can just do it every single time. Well, you want to soften that perfectionist energy <laughs> and look for the gifts in your way of, or even, you know, patting yourself on the back when you've done so much of it so far. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Without having it to have to be perfect. Yeah. Per per perfect was probably too strong of a word. I think you're right, though. Yeah. It's it's a good idea. Um, that's actually part of what the exercise is that, that uh, this mental bank process has you do. It's It's rewarding yourself for all the things that you kind of forgot about that you did during the day. So, you know, yeah. it's good stuff there. You know, take you know credit what? for it. Okay, sorry. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. I was just 
rounding out the comment. That's all. Okay. Um, I actually picked three cards for a reading. We can do them if you want. Uh, we got to do them quickly. We only have a few minutes left, but yeah, we can do them. Okay. Because the first card says perfect timing. So. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I might, as, might as well see where this is going. Yeah, right. Uh, so I'll, I'll read them all three quickly because we're running out of time. And, and I'll leave it to everybody else to see how that plays out for them. And if there's any time for any commentary, if it comes out, it comes out. Okay. So anyway, this perfect timing card is from uh, uh, Angel's Oracle. It says, now it's the perfect moment for you to act on your inspirations. The doors are open while you walk through them with us by your side, meaning the angels. Don't delay or procrastinate as all of the ingredients are ripe for your success. Everything and everyone is on your side supporting your positive outcome. So it goes on to say this card means that you need to take certain steps before your prayer can be fully answered. The angels say that now is the perfect time to act. They will guide you along the way. That's where inspiration comes in. Sometimes it's not so important how we approach a situation, but that we put energy, action, and intention into manifesting what we desire. And that's kind of what you were just talking about. Right. Um, so it says, once we take the first step in the direction of our desired outcome, the universe then gives us additional help. So that it says it you works. can take action yeah. now. The situation will work out as provided, providing you don't delay. Make a decision. These are like additional meanings. And any blocks in the past were because the timing just wasn't right. And then the second card is from the Energy Oracle deck, and it's Door to Spirit, which is spiritual awakening and new beginnings. And this one says the doors, the, this door opens onto an expansive energetic realm where all new beginnings or, originate. The orbs of light are guiding you through the clouds of the earthly world, leading you to a deeper understanding of your eternal identity, which of course is love the source of all true value and power. This door opens unto truly unlimited potential for the changes that happen here reach deep into the core of your being. As such, this card often heralds your increasing powers in the spiritual arts and a deepening connection with your spirit world. Don't be surprised if you find yourself becoming more intuitive. That inspired action will drop in when you're more intuitive, more aware of spirit's presence or more power. I'm sorry, I have to give a little commentary as I do it. Uh, <laughs> Don't, don't be surprised if you find yourself becoming more intuitive, more aware of spirit's present, or more powerful in your own healing practices. Now is the time to open up to the unexpected guidance and inspiration of your spirit and to the magic and power of your true identity. Okay. So that's perfect because that's where inspiration comes through, you know, and that's what you're experiencing, Walt, because you're realizing how much more connected you are. And the third card was just the, um, the root chakra card. And so, of course, that's that you know um chakra at the base of your spine it has to do with being supported taking action manifesting um so it okay. doesn't surprise me that that card came up because this is really that's like following through with the inspired action right taking yeah that well they're all connected aren't they there, there's, there's a there's yeah. a definite thread of commonality between them and I think it does actually really fit into the whole conversation we had today. So it does, the, yeah. The, I mean, there, there was, for cards, me, there was a lot of resonance there as you were as you were reading those. Yeah, yeah. These cards always—it's amazing how you pick them. It's encouraging know? too for me. I mean, to to hear those particular messages right now, in terms of what I'm working on in my own life, I, th those are encouraging. Those those are helpful. Right. So yeah, right. thanks for sharing those. Those are so great. Hopefully, it helps everybody else who's listening as well. <laughs> I think it probably does. I mean, especially what like what you were saying before. You know, if we're having a good time, they're having a good time. So that means yeah, yeah. it's probably helping them too. That's a good thing. Like like attracts like. Like attracts like. Before we leave, I want to give you a chance too for somebody who's looking for some of your very unique and direct approach to dealing with energy and, and learning how to uh, you know use energy to our benefit. How do they reach out to you? I would say just go to my website, lovemylife.coach. And you can always go to my YouTube channel. Just search Linda Armstrong Energy Healer and you'll find me. And so, so you kind of get to know me just like you are on the show here. You get to know my way of being and um, it really helps to find that trust because, you know, when you want to work with a healer or a coach, you want to be able to have a good trust and rapport with that person. So Very true. Yeah. All right. Good. Well, this has been great. And uh, I look forward to carrying on the conversation with you a week from now. Yes. Great. Me too. All right. Have a great weekend. We hope you have a good weekend as well. And we'll be talking to you next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.